Thank you, Bhavna. It's great to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure uh, to be speaking to you today on my favorite topic, which is to create a really wonderful and a fresh new brand. In my case, I'm going to talk to you about how we built a fresh way to create an online fish and meat brand fresh to home. Uh, this is something that has taken us about six years. Uh, fresh to home is today the largest online fish and meat uh, brand uh, today, doing about 2 million orders per month. Uh, much of the journey of the brand, like most other brands, stemmed from my own personal journey. Uh, just to give you a little background, I'm an entrepreneur, been in the Valley for most of my professional life, have done uh, you know, multiple brands that are now uh, some of the most well-known uh, in the world in the gaming space, obviously a wide departure from the fish and meat side. Uh, but just to give you a sense, uh, I have created a game, uh, I was general manager on a game called as uh, Farmville which is one of the world's largest online social media games. Uh, you know, we uh, were downloaded by about 600 million people. And at one point, uh, you know, dominated uh, probably uh, uh, in terms of the number of players, uh, more than the population of the entire Europe, right? So it was a really, really large uh, a property that we had built. Uh, that was my background. Uh, prior to that, I was a CEO for a software company in the US. Uh, so I spent a, a fairly large amount of my time in the US. I then relocated back in 2019, uh, 2009, back to India uh, to set up uh, the uh, India Center for uh, Zynga, which used to create the game called Farmville that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and during that process is really uh, when I really understood the vibe of creating a consumer brand in India, right? And uh, uh, in about 2012, uh, I used to be a really big fan of eating the, my favorite fish curry and rice because I'm a Malayali from, uh, you know, Kerala. So essentially that's ingrained into our DNA. And one of the key things that you face uh, when you are in a city like Bangalore way back in the time I used to buy uh, is that the availability of good quality fish and meat was really limited. And I found this really wonderful uh, site called as seedtohome.com. It was started by my current co-founder, Matthew Joseph, who is a fish exporter. Now, he would ship fish from Cochin uh, back to Bangalore and Delhi. And it would be really, really fresh produce, right? And I fell in love. My family fell in love with the product. And we used to be a really uh, you know, enthusiastic customer for Matthew. At some point, uh, Matthew had to shut shop because of various reasons. He's a, he's a fish exporter. Uh, and, and at that point of time, it was a recession. And running a company of e-commerce scale was not as uh, you know, familiar to him. Now, this was amazingly uh, bad for us because we couldn't get good fish, right? The family uh, literally lived on Matthew's fish. So at some point, uh, the only logical outcome, and I just relate this back to creating brands because most brands, are born out of your own personal uh, pain points, right? In my issue, this is a really big personal pain point. It is one of, uh, you know, the, your much loved product is not available. So I went back to Matthew, uh, I angel funded him and I got the whole, uh, you know, new company. We, joined, we started a new company called Fresh to Home together. That's really how we started the company. Now, at that point of time, while it was not really something that, you know, was done, you know, in a very innate fashion, uh, the core reason to start that is my own problem, right? I had kids uh, at that point of time, and I was really worried about chemicals in the product that we eat, right? Because if you look at fish in, in general, or meat, like chicken and others, uh, <clears throat> the typical market, there is a fairly large, uh, you know, percentage where we see that the preservatives are used in this whole supply chain. So fish in particular has got ammonia, has got formalin, and a bunch of other uh, sort of preservatives. Uh, you know, antibiotics are quite common in uh, the poultry uh, that we source. So <clears throat> these were things that I was aware of as a young father at that time. And it really pained me uh, to see, you know, how this is a commonplace practice uh, in the Indian ecosystem, right? So one of our biggest sort of uh, brand propositions, one of the, 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 the primary edifice at which we built Fresh to Home was no chemicals, right? Basically, no preservatives, no antibiotics, uh, or any other sort of chemicals, right? Even legally allowed chemicals like uh, flavor enhancers, stabilizers, and things like that. We just felt like we had to build a brand that is 100% true to that. 
And I'm proud to say that we've kept that, you know, at the end of six years from now, right? One of the biggest things that you run into as, as, as you build brands or as you build companies is to preserve the original ethical vision that you had. You know, how do you just take that across a period of time? So that's uh, fortunately what we've been able to do. If you look at our website or our, uh, you, know, uh, you know, any of our products, uh, we proudly display the certificates for uh, the latest uh, batch that we've tested from uh, in the most reputed labs in India on sort of 120 antibiotics and you know various different kinds of chemicals, right? This is our way of telling consumers, right? That, hey, we are very transparent. You can uh, go down to our website as a consumer, you can download the certificates of all the products that we deliver. And that's how transparent we are. And that's how true we are to sort of the original brand proposition. So a key learning that I'd like to highlight and one that I would uh, urge all of you, if you're building companies, is you know have a strong vision and whatever that strong vision is in our case it was really about creating 100% fresh no chemicals as an overall brand truth and then stay true to it at some points it might be really harder to stay true to it for example in our scenario uh, we took literally about five years before we could launch cold cuts and sausages and marinated products and so on because in the industry, when you, uh, you know, any of these product ranges require you to add some sort of chemicals, right? Maybe legally allowed chemicals, but it's still chemicals nevertheless, right? Whether it's a flavor enhancer or a stabilizer or things like that. And uh, we took an intentional decision not to do that, which essentially meant we had to invest in two to three years of a really high-end R&D to figure out natural ingredients and natural sort of ways of uh, creating products like that. We are now launching a really large range of uh, ready to fry products uh, with you know, things like your chicken patties, uh, your uh, tender, uh, tender uh, sort of popcorn chickens and so on. And most of it uh, you know, are in the current market done with chemical alternatives. So we've stayed true to the brand, we've figured this out and we've built India's first clean, la clean label brand in our segment. That's really, really the biggest emphasis we have done. Now, let me just start a little bit of a, a, a backdrop, right? We are talking about a market, a fish and meat market that's insanely large. Just to give you a sense, the Indian fish market uh, alone is a $50 billion market. Now, if you add poultry and meat, it's at about an $80 billion market. At about $80 billion, that's bigger than most of the Hollywood industry that you would be familiar with, right? So imagine all of those movies that you've seen in the last year the Avengers and Spider-Man and all of that stuff, this is actually much bigger than that. So it's sometimes uh, quite humbling uh, when you're in India and you really understand that the market segment and the population that you're catering to is so immense that the opportunity is abundant. All you have to do is to really figure out a niche segment, you know, figure out sort of what unfair advantage or what unmet need are you solving. And then try to create a brand proposition that uh, aligns with this unmet need. That's really what we did. In our case, what we did was we went to 5,000 harbors in India, uh, of which uh, you know we currently source actively from about 300 harbors uh, and across 3,000 fishermen. Right? These are uh, folks who work directly with us. We uh, you know source. Uh, with them through technology-enabled software. So we've got a, a software that we call as the uh, commodities exchange. It's essentially like a virtual exchange where uh, a, a farmer or a fisherman is able to trade with us using an app. And we've then built networks through our platform on uh, cold chain, really large series of processing facilities, collection centers across all of India, and also uh, the ability to transport by both air as well as by uh, you know road uh, across the length and breadth of India. That's really the backend that we had to build. That backend is now leading to fresh product for the consumer. For example, if you're buying chicken from us, is literally within the last 24 hours would be processed uh, in our own farms and uh, you know guaranteed to be antibiotic free. That is really, really how we built the brand. So we started again recapping uh, a really large brand proposition of no chemicals. Uh, we then uh, built the back end required to, uh, to uh, you know, ensure that we can deliver that value proposition, the value proposition of uh, no chemicals, no antibiotics, 100% fresh, you know, delivered from shore by, or from the farms back to your homes within 24 to 36 hours. And that's really the, the background we've built. 
Now, this took us a good, you know, three to five years. Until that three to five years, uh, you know, most of our uh, consumers were acquired through a word of mouth. Uh, that is really the strongest uh, marketing and brand uh, marketing that you could do, right? When a consumer really talks highly about your products, if you look at our uh, ratings in uh, Google Play Store or other places, we'd be rated uh, the highest, right? About 4.6 to 4.7 out of five uh, in, the, in the overall experience. What that also led to is a really high retention. Because if you look at our segment in e-grocery, a big part about building a brand is also ensuring that the consumers come back to you. Uh, it's not just important to, uh, to you know, do the acquire the users the first time, right? It's really around how you bring them back. Now, in our scenario, after sort of the second or third purchase, we see about 90% acquisition and 90% retention. That's among the highest in this industry. What that leads to is that you don't really need to spend more and more money just to bring the consumers back, right? You acquire them once, they're extremely sticky, they're very happy with your service, and they continue to be your brand ambassadors, right? And the biggest brand ambassadors you can get is really your own customers. That's, that's the best way to build a brand. Uh, but in, at the end of you know three, the third year, we are then, uh, or the fourth year, we were then uh, present in most of the cities that we wanted to. And it's really at that point, then we started thinking about building uh, and telling the story externally, right? It took a while for us to get there because uh, any startup takes at least three to four years to get the basic ingredients and the building blocks, right? We didn't want to go out to the market and tell our story much more actively before that. But since then, we've been quite active. Most of our acquisition comes in through uh, digital marketing because the, the, the kind of audience and the target that we go through are from the digital first or digital native audience. So we go through that audience first. Uh, we then uh, use a number of marketing strategies, right? So brand uh, uh, building has been uh, on the top of our mind uh, since uh, the inception. But in the last uh, year or so, we've been ex extremely active. Uh, we've hired uh, really seasoned marketing professionals who have really helped to take the brand to the next heights. A big part of this is to connect consumers with relatable content. Uh, so uh, we've done uh, a very uh, interesting campaign around the IPL called Totally Fresh, which really nudges people to buy only from the fresh you know, chemical-free fish and meat, delivering the message of freshness, right? So if you look at it, our name has fresh to home on it. So we started with that connect. We started to connect with the truth of the brand, right? Really that we are directly fresh from the fishermen and the farmers and we give it back to you directly. That was really the umbrella under which all of our brand identity was built on. We then did really interesting things, uh, you know, like uh, a recent Women's Day campaign that uh, encouraged women to break the shackles of the old way, uh, you know, that, you know, people judge you or people, you know, talk to you about. And this is really all under the brand umbrella of uh, we are completely fresh, right? So in the case of the Women's Day, uh, we messaged that fresh to home uh, has bought out a completely new way of looking at it, a completely fresh way of looking at it. We've done the same thing across Valentine's Day, where you know we've just reversed the whole scenario in which most Valentine's Day campaigns are shot. We broke the stereotype by showcasing a meat lover couple that are keeping it fresh uh, and replacing in traditional and outdated uh, ways of proposing, right? Uh, and interestingly, in this case, it was using uh, a calamari ring. Uh, so it was a really, really uh, interesting campaign. So we've done a number of that. We've also then done very quirky uh, digital first ideas. And some of them, you can check out our website. But at the end of the day, marketing is really about telling the truth, right? Telling our truth. And in our case, it is really about being the freshest fish and seafood uh, and meat provider uh, in the world. And uh, directly connecting from uh, connects consumers with the fishermen and farmers. And we've spoken that in the words and in the lens of no chemicals. That's really the other uh, reason to believe for the brand. That's really something we've hampered on. Now, going forward from here, uh, once you've now built the brand, the next step for us is to really now tap into sort of uh, the larger part of the India, right? So if you look at it, uh, our market segment, uh, us and our competition put together is only 0.3 or 0.5% of the overall market share. Now, that might sound like a small number, but in an absolute terms, is a really large number. Uh, but at the same time, the uh, room is limitless, right? India has got such a large uh, opportunity base 
that uh, there are multiple different ways to reach out to the consumer. E-grocery and e-commerce is really the first frontier in which how we build the brand. But as we go forward, what we see is that there's a huge opportunity to acquire consumers and to strengthen that customer experience by opening uh, retail stores on the platform, right? So we've enabled retail stores on the platform where consumers can come in and they can experience the brand. So you can come in, walk into one of our, uh, you know, platform retail stores and essentially uh, experience the fish or the meat because most people would like to touch and feel it. And what we see is that this leads to a really uh, faster digital adoption. So the consumers would come in the first time or the second time or the third time, then they would really be, uh, you know, uh, they like the quality and then the consumption then happens online, right? People then start buying the same product online because the convenience then kicks in. So we see that as a very complementary strategy, you know, opening up retail, opening up uh, different stores, giving consumers the opportunity to taste, uh, to actually understand the product, and from then uh, take that journey back online. So we've launched about 100 uh, powered by fresh to home stores. Uh, these are convenience stores that offers the finest quality chemical and preservative free products. Uh, it also has uh, ability to taste our ready to eat and ready to cook products. So this is a big area in which we are expanding. We are also now expanding much more drastically on the ready to cook and ready to eat portfolio. We see a lot of success that has come in and we see that portion of our business growing really, really large. And we expect that to drive a fair amount of traction. Uh, the last area that we see is really geographical expansion. So uh, we are now in a lot of the tier two and tier three India. So we are in about 100 cities that we've launched in the last six months. We've launched about 100 cities. This is outside our core metro uh, focus uh, and also the international focus in UAE. Uh, we have now launched in 100 different cities uh, across all parts of India, right? Uh, ranging from, you know, AP to Telangana to NCR to South India to the West India and so on. So it's a fairly large footprint. Uh, we anticipate that this will lead to the brand becoming much more uh, resilient because at the end of the day, when you have such a large brand footprint, both in terms of retail, as well as online, as well as a 360 view across multiple different geo focus, that's really when the brand, uh, you know, logarithmic recall starts kicking in. Last but not the least, we have also uh, are launching international in Saudi Arabia, in the GCC, and a bunch of the other countries, uh, in addition to our large presence in Dubai. So it's been a, a tremendous journey, uh, thinking and vis you know, visualizing uh, the journey from uh, you know, two uh, of us sitting together on a whiteboard, thinking about what uh, Indians will eat you know, five or six years from now. And I'm glad and proud to let you know that we've been able to take that story, we've been able to take that journey and that vision back to a fusion. Uh, much of it is thanks to the consumers. And I thank all of you who, or many of you who may be buying from us. Uh, and uh, that's really the biggest, proudest moment that you get as a founder, which is really to see the smile uh, in a consumer's face when they taste the product, right? And that's nothing more satisfying than that. So with that, uh, let me uh, stop there. I thank you for the opportunity and I wish best of the luck for the rest of the proceedings.